up in YouTube. This is Skiddo313, the Pokemon Showdown Goat in Training. And I'm actually changing my channel name to uh, JRG123, which is my uh, Pokemon Showdown username. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, beating Stall in Gen 8 OU. Uh, I haven't, pl I haven't uh, po posted in a while, but I've been playing a bunch of games, and um, I've gotten pretty high up on the ladder. And I, I started noticing that around the 1700s, 1600s, you see a lot of Stall. Um, and I know a lot of people were complaining about Stall, saying that if you, when they ban our Shifu, when they, because we, we know that they're going to. At the time of this video, it's still being suspect tested. Um, that Stall is going to get really hard to break. Because um, right now, I mean, the Future Sight Slowbro with Teleport into our Shifu, then clicking a, close, uh, a Choice Ban Close Combat or Wicked Blow is pretty much unstoppable um, for a Stall team. So uh, I just wanted to show. Uh, my methodology of breaking stall with the team I've been using a lot lately, and it doesn't use Urshifu, it doesn't use Future Sight, um, and in Gen 8, stall is not nearly as hard to beat as it was in the past. Gen 6 stall before they banned Mega Sableye was just demonic, it was impossible to beat. So I'm going to go through three games uh, and show y'all uh, kind of my mentality when I play against stall. Okay, so let's see, where was I at? This was 1764. So, yeah, most most stall teams will have uh, you know Ch Chansey or Blissey, uh, an unaware Pokemon. So that's either Clefable or uh, I'm gonna pause real fast. Either Clefable or Toxapex. They um, have one of the metal birds, so either Skarmory or Corviknight. I have not seen one with Celesteela. Um, what else do they have? Um, I, say, I think I said Blissey Chansey. And then the other ones is they're gonna have one Pokemon to be sure to counter our Shifu, because that's the main offensive threat right now, right? Um, so uh, that could be Clefable or Buzzwool. I think that's pretty much it. Um, and then a lot of teams like to have something that will help stop against really aggressive setup Pokemon. So I see actually some Scarf Ditto. That's on a lot of teams. That's gonna be on one of the teams in the, in the uh, replays that I show. Um, a lot of people like using this uh, this Galarian Slowking because it's pretty hard to break with, um, and it counters some of the Magirna sets pretty well. And it countered Fermosa pretty well when it was used. So I, I'll get back into it. So uh, this team, I'm gonna, uh, if anyone comments in the video saying they want it, I will uh, go ahead and paste in the copy paste but basically what this is this is a uh, swords dance cartana with giga impact <laughs> um just to kind of try to merc uh zapdos or moltres or mandibuzz and it and uh just to clear the way for rillaboom it's a pretty simple team uh, if you want it I'll, I'll i would uh gladly post in the comments but um i guess one of the big things about stall is uh, stall players are rarely, almost never, going to make really aggressive double switches, and they're usually going to make the obvious play um, and just try to break you down that way. So uh, you can kind of take advantage of that. So like I U-turned out there to bring in my Rillaboom safely, and um, since I dented the Corviknight pretty well with my uh, Kartana, the Rillaboom can actually break it. So this Rillaboom in this video, I've messed with the sets a bunch um, every time I play it. I think is yeah has Grassy Glide, has Drain Punch, Swords Dance, and then I, uh, I've i kind of switched between having High Horsepower or Knockoff, but always Life Orb, always Adamant, uh, Max Attack, and then 252 Speed. So yeah, here, since the Kartana broke down his team uh, pretty well, I was able to uh, knock out the Corviknight. So now he has he, he's pretty much knows he lost. Um, I don't have the grass to train up, so I couldn't kill the Clefable from there because this Clefable is um, unaware. The Swords Dance uh, Giga Impact from the Kartana didn't kill it. So, um, but again, it, he, there's really no offensive presence on these stall teams. So if you set up and you break a couple Pokemon and then it comes to one you don't think you can break, you can just switch out and start over again. Um, I don't know, they, they've just gotten a little bit more predictable in, in this generation. Uh, Gastrodon is uh, seen a lot on stall teams to help against a uh, Heatran. So Heatran is a big demon to stall teams because it can trap problemat problematic Pokemon with uh, Magma Storm and also it can use Taunt. Um, 
but Mahi Tran has Toxic. And actually, the reason I had Toxic was for uh, Hydreigon and Garchomp switch ins. There's not much you can do to them uh, with the Heatran. You can maybe Dragon Pulse them, but I think that's, Toxic's a much better option. You can also hit a Tyranitar. So, yeah, this guy uh, forfeited once I broke through uh, his core and he didn't have much left, and I had five Pokemon left. So, I'm going to go to another one of the battles that I had against Thal. Okay, so this one I think I played today, uh, 1700s again. Um, so with this team I actually have a lot more trouble against offense than I do the more bulkier teams. The hyper offensive teams I have having a lot of trouble with. And even having trouble with rain, because a lot of people using rain now are not using all water types. They're using a lot of Tornadus T, who's a big problem for this team. Um, so if we look at our opponent's team, this is kind of a cool stall. Um, that I had not seen before, but it had the Blissey and the Chansey. And then it had two water types as well. Um, and so this is an interesting build because he has both Quagsire and Ditto. So both are pretty good at stopping setup. And then Mandibuzz, so he didn't have a Steel type, which I would not ever run a Steel, a steel type. Um, but yeah, I think one thing a lot of people do when they first play Stall is they just kind of panic a little bit because it, it's can be really daunting of how am I going to break through these six Pokemon and most games I have trouble breaking through one bulky Pokemon but um, if you just <laughs> I swear the best thing to do is just kind of you know keep your composure and uh, just slowly break them down but uh, yeah so here I set up rocks with my clef and looking at his team I kind of thought the Mandibuzz might be specially defensive because he had uh, everything else was physically defensive like just looking at it so I thought it'd be specially defensive so the Giga Impact would kill, and I knew if he brought out his own Kartana, um, whatever move he went to, I could switch into. So he went for the Leaf Blade, and um, so he's Choice Scarf, because every Ditto is Choice Scarf pretty much. Um, so I brought out the Heatran, who quad resists it, and missed Magma Storm, but I just had to go for that. Um, so I go ahead and Toxic. This week, damn it, I feel like I'm about to sneeze, but uh, I'm not sneezing, whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, Suicune in Gen 8 is almost always combined. So I went and taunted it to just uh, help it not get too out of control. And then I thought he might sub there, so I went to Dragapult, because the Infiltrator ability. And here I'm making a really aggressive play by U-turning, because um, I knew I had another answer for that, and brought out the Heatran to try and trap the Chansey, but nope, missed another Magma Storm, that's okay. Um, but here I go ahead and hit one, but I kind of see this is a losing battle. I don't remember, what did I do next here? Let's see, oh, switch out in the Landos to get the Rocky Helmet chip on him, so he's definitely gonna have to switch out here. Protects, so I'm wondering if that's a, that, I never got to see it, but I think that's a wish. Um, so he brings out his ditto. Lander ST is good. Switching to Lander ST, ironically. And he defogs here. Yes, so I... Um, this was a really good setup opportunity for me that I just completely blew. Um, <laughs> I go into Heatran. I don't know what I was thinking here, but uh, I was not going to beat the Blissey. So, here... Um, I'm going to lose to Blissey. So the Blissey knocks out my Heatran. What did I do here? Uh, Rillaboom. To uh, set up a... Did I set up a Sword Stance? No, I think I went for the Drain Punch. So I didn't want to set up a Sword Stance and then basically get reverse swept by him clicking a plus two uh, Grassy Glide in the Grassy Terrain. That would have been bad. Um, so I drain punch first, didn't set up. So now that the ditto's out of the way, Rillaboom has a very clear, very, very clear win. Um, drain punch on Rillaboom is a really cool um, idea. So a lot of people like to run superpower, so you can do plus two and then kill Ferrothorn. But um, I, very few people I actually think send out Ferrothorn in hopes of that beating your Rillaboom one-on-one, -on -one, what they basically want to do is they just want to chip it with the Iron Barbs, the uh, potential Rocky Helmet, 
maybe they might click uh, Gyro Ball and not do that much because Rillaboom has pretty good physical defense. So Dragon Punch can actually allow you to um, counteract that chip that um, Pokemon like Ferrothorn are going to get on you. And also uh, something like a uh, Skarmory, which rarely have um, Brave Bird. So yeah, that was a pretty easy win. And the third stall match that I played recently was this one. I'll go ahead and switch sides. Um, yeah, so this opponent, I feel like the, of the opponents I'm showing in this video, this guy had the best team and the most scary team. Some, um, some of these Pokemon are really difficult to deal with. Uh, especially Suicune, man. Suicune is just very frustrating to deal with. Um, so yeah, I U-turned again. Um, because I, so this team that I'm using, it is a, I took Empo's, Empo had a team that had a Spectreer instead of Dragapult, and I took the team and I've literally messed with this so much, changed every single Pokemon's moveset, EVs, I've changed a lot of stuff about it and put Dragapult on, uh, in it. I, I, I know a lot of people love Spectreer, I just, I don't love, I really don't like it that much. Um, I mean, it's good, but I, I just think Dragapult's better when it comes to being a Choice Specs um, user. Um, yeah, uh, because it can use U-Turn. Uh, so many people have Chansey or Blissey on their teams that um, Spectre can, be, can become dead weight in certain matchups, but Dragapult is almost never dead weight. So I, 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 guess, I guess the dilemma with that is that Dragapult is more consistent, but Spectre is more potentially broken in some matchups. So um, just personal preference. They're very similar uh, Pokemon. But uh, yeah, so here I am. I really have made no progress, but uh, my opponent here. Um, yeah, okay, so this Clefable. Yeah, I've messed with this Clefable uh, set a bunch, but I went ahead and knocked off his Assault Vest so that I could break him easier with um, Heatran and then set up Rocks. So this was a really good, uh, and then baited the Sludge Bomb and brought in Landorus. So that was a really good uh, uh, sequence. So another thing I noticed is on stall teams, a lot of times these Corviknights don't have Brave Bird. They always have Body Press, Defog, Roost, and that fourth move um, changes. Sometimes people use U-Turn, which I think is a really bad idea on stall team. You don't need momentum. Um, so here's me U-Turning in the Heatran. So he uses Future Sight. And I Earth Power. Not sure what I was expecting there. I should have used the Magma Storm. So here I go ahead and sack the Dragapult to get in. I think I'm bringing in Kartana. Yep. Baiting out this. Yeah, so this is the Giga Impact Kartana. Um, it's cool. It can take out... It, it basically take out anything that will stop Rillaboom. Um, it has... Uh, I have problems here if there's multiple Pokemon that can check Rillaboom on a team because once you use Giga Impact, you basically sack yourself. Um, but I think it's a good set. Unfortunately, you know, Z moves got taken away this generation. I loved that Giga and Z Giga impact set in Gen 7. I thought it was beautiful. But then again, in Gen 7, th there was no Rillaboom to really take advantage. Um, I think Rillaboom is significantly better than Tapu Bulu ever was. Um, I think it's in the top 10 usage right now, actually. Um, so here's me. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to tra uh, trap this Blissey in this matchup. I don't quite remember, but it looks like it. No, I go into Rillaboom. What did I expect him to do here? Seismic Toss? How much health did he? So the, the Corviknight's at 90% plus rocks. Now it's at 78. Um, so I, I, I felt like I was in a pretty good position here to Sword Stance again, because I knew even if he had a Brave Bird, I would have lived that. Maybe able to Drain Punch a lot of the back. So you'll see how much, oh no, this Will Boom had knockoff, yeah, because I switched between having knockoff and high horsepower. So in this case, the knockoff, I knew would uh, kill after two Swords Dances. And then the rest of his team here is pretty much checked by Heatran. Um, but man, Magma Storm, it's such a good move, but its accuracy is terrible. I swear, I know it says 75%, but I swear I miss, that's a 50-50 for me. <laughs> I feel like I miss it just as often as I hit it. Um, yeah, so I bring in Rillaboom. I'd be more aggressive with Rillaboom. 
at the end of this game because it's not really needed to end game him. I really just need to keep that um, heat train alive because uh, the toxic, the sweet tune, and then it will 1v1 this Clefable pretty easily. Dang, like this really shows Clefable's bull, taking only 54% from Life Orb, Adamant, Brassy Glide from Rillaboom. Um, um, yeah, so if you've gotten to this point in the video, thank you for watching. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, so this Clefable was, I don't know, has he revealed? So, so far, Moonblast, Flamethrower, Soft Boiled, and then its fourth move was Combine. So, um, the only Clefables that will one-on-one -on -one Heat Trans are the ones that have uh, Thunder Wave. Um, or a good amount of Special Bolt. So here's me. Oh, missing out on the KO on Blissey. So Blissey goes down. Um, yeah, so having, I, I guess, um, my my actual plays in these three matches, none of them were super crazy good. Um, I just, you know, I built a team that's pretty well versed against Stahl. I, I really recommend having on any team one strong setup mon that can completely break. And then you're pretty good against stall teams. You just gotta, you know, keep pivoting around until you get a good opportunity to bring him in and uh, take out. Uh, just punch a hole in your opponent's team, and then have a good enough backbone to take out everything that's left. Because a lot of stall teams kind of need, rely on the synergy between their defensive pieces to wall everything. So if you kind of just have one a domino fall down, then you know. Instead of relying on bu on Buzzwool to check Rillaboom, you were relying on Corviknight, which wasn't as good a check as Buzzwool. Buzzwool's a better check to physically grass um, offense than Corviknight. Um, Corviknight can be broken a little bit easier than Buzzwool. Though the acrobatic set on Rillaboom can take out Buzzwool pretty nicely. Um, yeah, so this is, again, really kind of a painful ending. Uh, it's just... He's kind of slowly <laughs> whittling away. Get rid of those leftovers in the cloth. Set up rocks to chip the, the Suicune. Yeah, so this end game, I'm gonna speed this up. Oh, hyper fast. Don't know what I was expecting there. Yeah, this is fun stuff, just sitting there installing each other out. But he, he can't touch me with um, immune to flamethrower and take nothing from, uh, take less than leftovers for it. So yeah, again, thank you for watching. Um, pretty much. All right, talk to y'all next time. Bye.